Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Can we give the Lord a hand praise all over the building? Can we bless the Lord? Can you just say something to the Lord? Lord, we love you. Lord, I see you, Deke. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Deke, for giving God the praise this morning. Come on, clap your hands and say something to the Lord. Well, the Lord is good. I always say the Lord is good. What did he do this morning? He woke you up. <laughs> I got happy right there. What did he do this morning? In your what? Right mind. I need somebody to talk back to me. Did, did, what did he do? Woke you up this morning? In your right mind. Can you stand all over the building for a word of prayer by Minister Felton? Good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord God. We thank you for this amazing day, Lord God. In spite of the rain, Lord God, you saw fit to wake us up this morning in our right mind. Lord God, for that, we tell you thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for being with us through the week, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for bringing us through the highways and the byways, Lord God. Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus, I would like to welcome you to this place, Lord God. Welcome you to the harvest, Lord God, where you can come in, Lord God, and have your way, Lord God. Sit wherever you like, Lord God. Go through the, go through the pews, Lord God. Lord God, touch each and every, every one, Lord God. Lord God, let us be ready for your word this morning, Lord God. Open up our ears, Lord God, our hearts and our minds, Lord God, to receive a word from you, Lord God. Lord God, we ask you to, to be with the ones that are on their way here, Lord God. Lead them and guide them on the, while they're on their way here, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for loving on us, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for breathing on us, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for keeping us, Lord God, through the many dangers, Lord God, that we face, Lord God. Lord God, we ask you to bless this place right now, Lord God. Shower us with your love, Lord God. Breathe on us right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Send down a fresh anointing from on high, Lord God. Lord God, we need you in a mighty way, Lord God, each and every day, Lord God. But this morning, we want to celebrate you, Lord God, you and only you, Lord God. We want to celebrate you in a way that you have never seen us celebrate you before, Lord God. We come here to honor you and give you praise on this morning, Lord God. Lord God, I ask you to bless the man of God that you have put your word into, Lord God. Let him send down the word, Lord God, and let us fall on fertile ground, Lord God. Lord God, let his word be fresh and come from only the heavens that you bring us from, Lord God. Lord God, we ask you to keep a hedge of protection around him, Lord God, around his family, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for this day. Lord God, this is my prayer, and I pray it in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. Welcome to the harvest. We're glad that you're here. Welcome to the harvest, where the Spirit of the Lord dwells. Welcome to the harvest, where the table is spread. Come on, my brothers and sisters, give God your hand. Welcome to the harvest. Welcome to the harvest. We're glad. We're glad that you're here. Welcome to the harvest. Where the spirit, where the spirit of the Lord dwells. Welcome to the harvest, where the table. Come on, oh, oh give God your hand. Black History 365, Yvette Barnes. Good morning, New Harvest. Marjorie Stewart Joyner. Marjorie Stewart Joyner, Joyner was an influential inventor and beauty industry pioneer who created the permanent wave machine in 1928. We thank her, ladies. This device allowed for longer lasting curls and straightening of hair, making hairstyling more efficient. Joyner was also the first black woman to receive a patent for a beauty invention, leaving a lasting impact on the hair care industry. Marjorie Stewart Joyner. Black History 365. Come on, can we praise God just a little bit? Can we celebrate and praise God just a little bit? Can we worship him just a little bit? Can we 
we magnify his name just a little bit? Can we glorify his name just a little bit? Can we let the world know that we love Jesus? Can we let the world know that we appreciate him? Listen, I got something to tell you. Jesus said, if you lean on me, he will not do what? He won't let you fall. Come on, clap them hands. Yeah. Come on. Jesus said, if you lean on me. Jesus said, if you lean on me. Jesus said, if you lean on me. I won't let you fall if you lean on me. Jesus said, if you lean on me. Jesus said, if you lean on me. Jesus said, if you lean on me. I won't let you fall. I won't let you fall if you lean on me. Jesus said, if you lean on me. If you lean, lean on me, well, I heard you say, if you lean, lean on me, I won't let you fall. I won't let you fall if you lean, lean on your me. hands right down and pray. Yeah, yeah, Can we say it again? Jesus said, if you lean, lean on me, Jesus said, if you lean on me, Jesus said, if you lean on me, I won't let you fall. I won't let you fall if you lean on me. Well, I'll be your doctor if you lean on me. Well, I'll be your doctor if you lean on me. I'll be your doctor if you lean on me. I won't let you fall if you lean on me. I see ya. Jesus said if you lean on me. I heard him say if you lean on me. All you gotta do is read right there. I won't let you fall. I won't let you fall if you lean on me. Can we say it one more time? My Savior said if you lean on me. My master said, if you lean on me, oh, my Jesus said, if you lean on me, I won't let you fall. I won't let you fall if you lean on me. Anybody know right there? I tried him. Anybody tried him and you know that he won't let you fall. Hey, oh. Can we say it one more time for you? Yeah, Jesus said, if you lean on me, I heard him say, if you lean on me, I heard my master say, if you lean on me, I won't let you fall. 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 I promise you, I won't let you fall. I won't let you fall. I won't let you fall. You won't let I won't let you fall. 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 I
He won't. He won't. Anybody know that the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth and truth in all generations. Lord, you are good. Yes. Clap your hands like this, everybody. Come on. If you don't mind, we want a corporate worship. Is that okay? Come on, everybody stand to your feet. Come on. We want you to put your hands together like this, everybody. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. Come on, put your hands together. Oh, you know it. Come on, can we get the side, the side right here? Oh, oh. Listen, say, oh, 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 oh. Wonderful. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and yes. your mercy is I hear you testify. forever. Oh, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good yeah. and your mercy is forever. Come on, we can say it together. People from every nation. People from every nation and time. From generation. From generation to generation. We worship, we worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship. We worship for who you are. For who you are. Oh, we worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship. We worship for who you are. Who you are. You are good. You are good. Oh, I, I dare you to put your hand. I hear y'all singing. I hear you worshiping hey. this morning. Hey, come on, put your hands together, everybody. I see you, Sierra. Hey, hey, one more time from the top. Lord, you are good, yeah. Lord, you are good and your mercy is oh, forever. Oh, I hear you. Forever. Oh, Lord, you are good, say. Lord, you are good and your mercy is yeah. forever. Y'all sound wonderful. Lord, you are. Lord, you are oh. good and your mercy is oh. forever. From generation, from generation to generation, we worship, we worship you. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Oh, I hear you. We worship, we worship for who you are. Who you are. Oh, hey, hey. We worship, we worship you. Hey, yes you are, yes you are, yes you are. Hey, 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 so, so good, good so, so good, so good, so good. Listen, cause you are good all the time and all the time. Cause you are good all the time and all the time. You are everybody, you are, you are good well, all the time yeah. and all the time. You are good. You are good. Yeah. Well, all the time. You are good. Listen. Well, help me say good. God is good. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Good. God is good. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You're my strength. Yes, you are. You're our joy. Yes, you are. You're our Yes, you are. You're our way maker. Yes, you are. You're our deliverer. Yes, you are. 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 Yes, you are
Keep it last second. We give them the girl. Come on. People from every nation, every nation and from generation, from generation to generation, we worship, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship, we worship for who you are. Oh, come on, clap your hands. All you people that shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Oh, it look like you came to have some church today. Anybody know that he's still a way maker? Anybody know him to be a deliverer? Anybody know to be a bridge over troubled water? Don't fool me now. Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God's been good to me. No, tell him, God's been good to me. And I got a reason to praise him. Amen. Come on, don't stop praising him. The Bible declares our God is great, and he's greatly to be praised. This is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad therein. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. I'm excited and delighted to be in the house of prayer one more time. I know it's raining outside, but we thank you so much for pressing your way through the rain. Amen. And we thank God for our streaming community. We thank God for our sanctuary saints. Amen. It's good to be in the house of prayer one more time. We certainly pray for all the victims of um, Hurricane Milton. Amen. God spared us, but some are going through it as I speak. Amen. Flooding and some have lost their homes and businesses. Amen. But we send prayers their way. Amen. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Amen. Listen, church, we want to continue to pray for Brother Charles Washington. I haven't seen him. Uh, check on him. Amen. Sister Butler, Sister Birch. Amen. Pastor Tyree. Amen. I got the news that our very own Sabrina um, Samadhi, her father, amen, had a stroke. So we're praying his recovery and his healing and his wholeness. How many know by his stripes we are healed? Amen. We serve a Savior that can heal us. Amen. I'm delighted about that. Amen. You can't make me doubt him, for I know too much about him. Amen. When I was hungry, he fed me. When I was naked, he clothed me. Amen. When I didn't have a roof over my head, he gave me shelter. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Amen. All right, we have a baby dedication. Uh, you know I don't wait to the end to do that because it's very important and significant. Amen. It's significant to dedicate our children back to the Lord. If all are here, we can do that now. If not, we'll wait to the end. Everyone's here? Come on, let's do it. Amen. Jesus loved the little children. Jesus loved the children. All the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Come on, sing it like you've been in church. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the We put the, the parents world. in the middle. Grandparents can flank them. Jesus God, loves the little godparents. children. Godparents. All. All the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Brothers and sisters. 
God through Moses made covenant with Israel, saying to the people, and these words which I command you this day shall be upon your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your children, and you shall talk of them when you sit in your homes and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down and when you rise in the days of the new covenant Jesus said let the children come to me and do not hinder them for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven and on the day of Pentecost the apostle Peter declared regarding salvation given to us through Christ that the promise is to you and to your children it is therefore our privilege to present our children to the Lord and our duty to raise them in his ways. These parents now bring this child to offer her in dedication and to pledge in the presence of this congregation to bring her up in the Lord's discipline and in the Lord's instruction. Let us pray. Almighty God, everlasting Father, who have made saving covenant with your people, and out of that, your loving kindness has ordained us that we should live before you and family. We thank you that it is our privilege to declare and dedicate our children back to you in steadfast hope that they will cleave to your covenant and live to your glory. We entreat you for this child that she may be delivered from the power of sin, the penalty of sin, and the presence of sin. And be delivered from Satan and be set apart by the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray for these parents that they may be given divine aid so that both by instruction and example they may lead this child in the way of everlasting life. And also may and all may come in unity together to your eternal kingdom. We pray for this congregation that we may faithfully discharge our duties to both parents and child through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Let all that love the Lord say amen. I'm going to go over um, the four vows or charges. At the end of each one, you can say we do or our I do. Do you, in the presence of God and this church, solemnly dedicate this child to the Lord? Will you endeavor to live a life before this child which give witness to your faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Do you accept the authority of the Old and New Testament as the word of God? Out of them will you endeavor diligently to teach this child the commandments and promises of the Most High God so that your child may early come to the personal faith in Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. Congregation, let us acknowledge our duty to support this family with our prayers and encouragement, thereby aiding both parents and child to fulfill all that has been promised. And we will do that harvest by standing. I want you to turn around and see all the prayers for this blessing. Amen. Congregation, you may be seated. Father God, we come now believing in your word and believing in your power. God, we come now to dedicate this young soul, young life back to you. God, we plead the blood of Jesus over her right now. God, we pray that you put a hedge around her, keep her from all hurt, harm, and danger. And God, if she ever get in hurt, harm, or danger, we pray you get in it with her. God, we pray for her destiny. God, we pray that she prosper. God, we pray that she will be an example to a dying world. Oh, God, whatever her, the foot of her, whatever the soles of her foot should touch, it shall be heard. Oh, God, enlarge her territory even now. Oh, God, we speak life. Oh, God, we speak promise. Oh, God, we speak productivity. And, God, we thank you for these parents, godparents, and 
and those that are standing around this young, precious life. We know the old African proverb says it takes a village to raise a child. And so, God, we thank you for this village. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Baby dedication, this certifies that Aria, did I say that right? Aria, I went to Ponciana Public School, amen. Aria, Leona Green, did I get it right? Amen, was dedicated to God at the New Harvest Church on the 13th day of October in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2024. Amen, Mother Shakira Howard, Father Paul Green, and yours truly, Pastor Teacher. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in faith. Amen. This is the certificate. Amen. We pray. Amen. That you cherish it and frame it. Amen. This is a very important day. I give it to them. Amen. Now, I'm going to say this quickly. Amen. To, to the parents and to the godparents and to this village. Amen. It does not always take money. Amen. To raise a child. Did y'all hear me? Money answers all things, but you can't leave money to raise a child. This child going to need your support. This child going to need your example. This child is going to need your prayers. Amen. And the parents going to need y'all to watch them sometimes. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't stand up here if you can't give them a couple of hours off. Amen. And so they need time to recalibrate, amen. It's stressful raising children, amen. It becomes very overwhelming at times. And so, so often we need a break to recalibrate, to rejuvenate, amen, to focus, amen. And so the best thing you can give this child is a great example with some money, amen. A great example with some money. But your money cannot be the example. Amen. You must live a life that will show this child that Jesus lived and he got up in all of us. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Amen. If you would like to take pictures afterwards, you're more than welcome. Come on, give this family a hand. Amen. Beautiful family. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we thank God. You, you, you can return to your seats. We thank God for this Sunday. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. I am, amen, so blessed and excited that Mount Nebo Missionary Baptist Church is in the house. Amen. Their pastor, amen, my son, amen, Pastor Martez Whipple Sr. is here. Amen. And he's going to share the word for this morning. I want a good church hymn, amen, before he preached. So come on, praise team. Give me, give me a good church hymn. I like balance. Amen something that can prepare us, amen, for the word of God. They call it a sermonic hymn, amen, amen. So the next voice you will hear after, amen, the old hymn of the church, amen, is my son, amen, in the ministry, the effective, esteemed, efficient pastor of the Mount Nebo uh, Missionary Baptist Church. Raise your hand towards Pastor Whipple. Say, Pastor, teach, reach, and preach in Jesus' name. As we prepare for the word of God, anybody ready for the word? Amen. Jesus, keep. Me near the cross. Oh, I see you. There, the precious fountain. Woo, free to. Lend strength, oh Lord, 
flows from Calvary's mount, mountain. Oh, we're crying in the Tribulations. Hey, hey. Rest. Oh, yeah, we're going to take our rest. Rest. Be somebody by the hand. God, we thank you for this day. It's preaching time. All that I am is because of you. All that I'm not is because of myself. I 
find it behind the cross called Calvary. Use me for your glory. I pray for the hand that I'm holding right now. Not knowing what my brother or sister is going through. God, we thank you for 24 years. This giant have stood the test of times. We thank you for another year. Now let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For you are my strength and my redeemer. It is in Jesus' name. Amen. If you love Jesus, clap your hands and give God praise. Come on, I say if you love Jesus. While you're clapping, can we give God praise for our pastor, Pastor Gregory Thompson, Jr. To his lovely wife, amen. My mama, amen. amen. To his mom, amen. Amen. And to all of my Heavenly Father's children, all the preachers, pastors, to my bishop, Bishop Rufus, and to Prophet Jay, who preached the word this morning, to the point we was getting ready to just send a check. Amen. But we had a good time this morning. So both chairmen, amen. Chairman Deacon Block and Deacon Alfred, we give God praise for them. And to this incredible, awesome praise team. I want to get right into the word, Acts 27. Acts 27. Acts chapter 27. Twenty-seven. Going to skip a few verses. Acts twenty-seven. When you have it, say Amen. It's a lot of people in here on a rainy Sunday. Amen. I hope they don't call the fire marshal. Amen. Acts twenty-seven. Verse number one. And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, the centurion of Augustus band. Verse 9, and when much, much time was spent, and when sailing was not dangerous, because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them. And verse 10 and 11, said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. In verse 14, but not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurocleta. Verse 15, and when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. In verse 18, and we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship. Verse 20, and when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was taken away. Verse 21 and verse 44, I conclude that after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me not have lost from Crete, but to have gained this harm and loss. In verse 44, and the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. I want to talk from these words as you take your seat. I want to talk about the danger in not listening. the danger and not listening. The average person 
speaks at about 135 to 175 words a minute, but can listen up to 500 words in a minute. Most of successful people are the ones who do more listening than talking. Most of successful people are the ones who do more listening than talking. There's a reason why God gave us two ears and one mouth. So that we can listen twice as much as we speak. Most people do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to always try to reply. James chapter 1 verse 19 says, Bishop Rufus, wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Dean Jackson puts it like this, Prophet J. Listening is an art that requires attention over talent, spirit over ego, others over self. But here is, Pastor Thompson, what James Cash Penny says. He says, the art of effective listening is essential to clear communication. And clear communication is necessary to management success. And so when it comes to the danger of listening, three things will happen when you choose not to listen. Number one, it will cause you pain. Let the church shout pain. The reason many of us are going through pain right now is because we choose not to listen. I, I, I like this side over here. Y'all warming up and I can't get this crowd over here. So let me focus with y'all for a moment until they warm up and they get a little crump over there. And so not only does danger, pain causes, uh, uh, danger listening causes pain, but secondly, uh, when we choose not to listen, it causes us to have pressure. I got some help now. Not only do it cause pain and pressure, but when we choose not to listen unto the lane, it takes away our peace. And truth of the matter is that we all in here, including myself, have experienced shipwrecks due to us thinking we know it all. <laughs> Tell somebody, baby, you don't know it all. Many people in the Bible suffered due to them not listening. Can I call the roll for a moment? Adam and Eve had a listening problem. Sarah had a listening problem. Pharaoh and his army had a listening problem. The children of Israel prayed for 430 years. God delivered them. They still had a, Jonah had a, King Nebuchadnezzar had a, Saul, Samson, Balaam had a, Pilate and the 12 disciples had a, Pharisees who couldn't see and Sadducees who were so sad that they couldn't see had a. And if we all can be 100, there have been times when we all failed to listen. And by us not listening, we found ourselves faced with the shipwreck. That's what we find here in our text. A shipwreck takes place with over 276 people. All because of people in authority refuses not to listen. Three points we see. First of all, Paul gives them instructions. It's right there in verse 9 through 11. Uh, read it when you get a chance. The purpose of instructions, hear me out, Harvest and Nebo, is to provide clear guidance on how to achieve a desired outcome. God places pastors in our lives not to hurt us, but to help us. How shall they hear 
without a preacher. Watch this. They was focused on the problem and not the problem solver. You see, Paul understood that winter month selling was virtually impossible. Most writers deduced from these facts that the time of this voyage was most likely in mid-October when selling was more dangerous. This was more than mere advice, but an earnest desire to persuade the men in charge to heed the truthfulness of his observations. Uh, Paul's warning, my God, was sensible and wise. Paul was not ignorant uh, of the sea, for in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, verse 25, he records uh, that three times I was shipwrecked. Note these have occurred in the past, uh, and in Acts 27, uh, Paul says, this is about to be my fourth shipwreck. A night and a day I have spent in the deep, and if anybody who knows what it is like to be stranded in the sea, Pastor Paul wasn't telling them anything wrong. Paul, my brothers and sisters, watch this, realize this would be potentially be a very dangerous voyage. He is not necessarily speaking of a prophecy, but is given this warning based on his considerable experience with sea travel. Also notice, Deacon Blocker, that he says that there would be loss of our lives, which is somewhat surprising as he knows that Jesus uh, has promised him that he would eventually come to Rome. From Acts 27, verse 21, it appears uh, that Paul addresses these comments to everyone on board. Uh, in verse 10, watch this, Paul uses the word, I perceive. Perceive, which is a verb of seeing, but figuratively in this passage uh, means to come to an understanding and thus speak of mental perception, uh, a perception Paul is basing on his previous experience. Paul's perception was not by any divine communication, but by simply in the exercise of a good judgment aided by some experience. The event justified his decision. And the problem, here it is, we face as a people is that we take advice from people who have no experience. Y'all don't got to preach, y'all don't got to say amen. I know I'm preaching this morning. They ain't been through nothing. They tell you what you want to hear versus what you need to hear. And now you find yourself heading down a road of destruction. All because you're listening to the wrong advice versus the right advice. In this season of my life, and hear me and hear me well. I am very cautious who I listen to. Tell somebody, you better be cautious who you listen to. Who, 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 who's in your ear? I, I, I wish I could illustrate what I'm trying to say. I think I can, Kevin. <laughs> Stories told about a married couple. The kid, one thing about this married couple, they was having some challenges, in which all married couples have challenges. <laughs> and for you single people that are looking to be married, amen, you will have challenges. <laughs> and so this married couple is having challenges, and uh, uh, the woman um, who's married to her husband she has this friend, and her friend is single. And she keep going to the friend for advice. And the friend ain't even married and don't even got a man. But she's going to the friend for advice. The friend tells her simply, Girl, leave him. He ain't good, Sophia, for you. So she gets the U-Haul truck. She packs up. She leaves him. She come back next week to get the rest of her items to get after it. She gets there, and the friend 
is sitting at the bar. She said, friend, I thought you told me to leave him, and he is no good. The friend replied, girl, I told you to leave him, but just because I said he wasn't good for you don't mean that he ain't good for me. Come on back here now. All I'm trying to tell you is that you better be careful who you talk to because there's some people who's trying to see you drown. There's some people who want to see you be destructive. There's some people who don't want to see you succeed. You got to be careful who you allow speaking to your life because everybody that say that they're your friend, they'll smile in your face and at the same time uh, take a machete and stab you in your back. Tell somebody, be cautious who you listen to. Matter of fact, stop running your mouth. Be cautious who you talk to. Because when you tell them something, they go tell somebody else, y'all ain't talking to me. You got to learn to be careful who you talk to. But, but secondly, not only Paul gives them instructions, but Paul sees that they are hopeless. It, it's in verse number 20. A hurricane by the name of Eurocletan shows up. The, the, the ship, yeah, that's a big word, I know, was caught in a typhoon. It took me three weeks to get that word right. <laughs> Which blew with such violence, I'm being honest, that they could not face it, but were forced in first instant to scud before it. For such is the evident meaning of the expression, Mother Whipple, yielding to it, were borne along by it. Watch this. Don't miss this, church folks. The sudden change from a sound wind to a violent northerly wind is a common occurrence in these seas. The term typhonic, by which it is described, indicates that it was accompanied by some of the phenomenal which might be expected in such a case namely the agitation and whirling motion of clouds caused by the meeting of the opposite currents of air when the change took place, and probably also of the sea raising it in columns of spray. Don't miss this. The significance of this detail is that, watch this. The text says the sun, moon, stars were the only means of navigation on the open sea. They were now totally helpless, while at the same time faced with a hurricane, faced with a storm. And so the question that comes to my mind is that why do God allow us to go through storms? First of all, storms often come when we disobey the will of God. However, it was not Paul who was at fault, but the centurion in charge of the ship. And sometimes we suffer because of the unbelief of others. Secondly, storms have a way of revealing character. <laughs> some, some, some of sailors selfishly try to escape. Others can only hope for the best. But Paul trusted God and obeyed his will. Thirdly, somebody shout storms. E even the worst storms cannot hide the face of God. Or hinder the purposes of God. Paul received the word of assurance that they needed. And God overruled so that his servant can arrive safely to Rome. Finally, my brothers and sisters, storms can give us opportunities to serve others. And bear witness to Jesus Christ. Paul was the most valuable man on the ship. He knew how to pray. He had faith in God. He was in touch with the Almighty. Let me say that because that went over your head. I'm going to say it again. He knew how to pray. He had faith in God. He was in touch with the Almighty. I'm, I'm going to say that one more time. Paul knew how to pray. He had faith in God. He was in touch with the Almighty. Can I give you a secret for those of you that's watching, many of you that's watching and being nosy? There are some pastors who don't even pray. How, 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 
how you know they don't pray? Their sermons are powerless. People can't get delivered. All because they spend no time with God. When was the last time your church saw signs and wonders? Folks passing out and children being filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, but over here at 12145 Northwest 27th Avenue, Miami, Florida, 33167. You better believe that if you come through these doors, you gonna leave different than how you came. Because one thing about Gregory Thompson, uh, he spends times with the Lord. Uh, he don't preach gossip, but he preaches the gospel. He don't condone in foolishness because he's a man of faith. Uh, we may not have the biggest church in the world, but he got something that money can't buy, thieves can't steal, and that's character. Character will take you places you never imagined. Character will give you favor you never was expecting. Character will draw you closer to the cross. Y'all ain't talking to me. I wish I had about 100 people to jump up and point at your pastor and shout, that's my pastor. Yeah, tell somebody, he, he talking about my leader. My, my leader got character. He got an anointing, not just a gift, uh, because it is the anointing uh, that destroys the yokes. Uh, I dare you to give God praise for your leader. He ain't a pimp, he's a preacher. Y'all ain't talking to me. What profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? Somebody point at him and say, keep on keeping on, Pastor. Sit down. In, in the midst of them annoying Paul, Paul shows us, like Pastor Thompson, he has much patience. Anytime you can pass the test, you got a lot of patience. And some of y'all laughing at me and take one to no one. Anytime he can pastor you and you and you, he got some patience. He comes back in verse 21. Put it up on the screen, Ashley. He says, but after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained the harm and loss. Let me break it down. In, 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 in other words, he is telling them, Yes, sir. These four words, children hate to hear from their parents. Students hate to hear from their teachers. Members hate to hear from their pastor. Paul tells them so many words in verse 21, I told you so. I was at Pain Trail the other night, and I did something Pastor told me not to do. It took everything in me not to call him. And I had to hear those words again. I told you. Paul says to the men, you ought to have followed my advice and not to have set sail from Crete and incurred this damage and loss. Now, some see this as a rebuke, but others simply as a reminder, which I favor. 
he was not rubbing it in. Anytime pastor tell us, I told you so, he's not rubbing it in. He has reminded them of this early warning to establish his credibility for what he was all, what, what he was about to tell them. Surely they would all be very attentive to his second declaration. Remember in the beginning, in verses 9 through 11, Paul instructed them not to sell. And now in verses 22 through 43, he has to redirect them. They refuse us to listen to three verses. And now Paul has to use 21 verses. While at the same time dealing with a storm. He told them in three verses what they needed to do. But it took 21 verses. Do you know how much time that is? To explain to them how they're going to get out of what they done got themselves in. When they shouldn't even be in what they are in. I'm almost finished. My father, the late Dr. Emmanuel Whipper Sr. He used to tell me this. Tess, you can talk, but son, can you ever listen? <laughs> Look at your neighbor and tell them, can you listen? They, 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 they were scared of you because they got an issue with you. They ain't even say it. Look at somebody else and say, can you listen? Every action don't need a reaction. Every sermon don't need a shout. Sometimes you need to bite your tongue and shut your mouth and learn how to listen. Ask your neighbor, can you shut up sometimes? You said it nicely earlier, they ain't understand that. Come on, look at somebody else and say, can you shut up sometimes? Uh, either you're deaf or you just don't. I know I'm going to get in trouble in all of saying that. Because you choose not to listen. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? And now they're hopeless due to them not listening. What loving leader go lead his people wrong? What shepherd would shepherdless you? Many shepherds, when one leaves, the Bible says you're supposed to go after that one. Most pastors don't do that. Thirdly, not only Paul gives them instructions, not only Paul sees that they're hopeless, and I'm finished, Paul's words come to pass. It's on verse 44. God sent Paul encouragement and a prophetic word, a promise that everyone on the ship would survive. God understands our fear. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm finished, but we may feel anxious and afraid in our storm. But if we look to God, he will strengthen and encourage us. How many of you know God will encourage you? Here we find people who have come to the very end of their own ability. They're, they are in their ship. Cargo having been tossed overboard, the tackling gone, feeling absolutely hopeless of either the salvation of the ship, of their own lives. But it has been well said, watch this, man's 
extremity is God's opportunity. And so God intervenes. Warren Wiser said that a crisis does not make a person, but a crisis shows what a person is made of. And it tends to bring true leadership to the fore. The men were becoming discouraged. But thank God for a preacher. Being aboard the ship. A good word from the Lord is always a good antidote for discouragement. Don't, don't you remember when the disciples was in the ship? And the Bible said waves begin to get in the boat. Yeah, 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 yeah. A boat is supposed to sit on water. But the water was sitting on a boat. But the boat was still floating. Y'all will catch that later. And the disciples cried out, Master, cares I not that we perish. Jesus wakes up out of his Sunday nap. Stands on the ship. As my daddy would say, he looked at the lightning. And he said, stop signing your signature through the airways. He told the thunder to go back in your soundproof room. He told the waves to lay down like a canine dog. Y'all ain't talking to me. And they said, what matter of man is this? That even the winds and the seas obey him. Somebody ought to testify, what a mighty God we serve him. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. And here's the shot of the text. Paul's presence was responsible for their deliverance. His God was with him. And because he was the apostle, he would save all of them. Here's the shout of the message. Whatever storm we face, it's in verse 44. Put it up, Ashley. God would always provide an escape. I'm going to say it again because I am about, about to go to my seat. Whatever you're going through, God is getting ready to provide an escape. Tell somebody he may not come when you want him. But I'm so glad that he'll be on time. Come in, Hebrew boys. Uh, they was in the furnace. Uh, the Lord showed up. Uh, Daniel uh, was in the lion's den. Uh, and God provided an escape. Uh, Peter uh, was about to be killed in prison. But because uh, the church prayed for him, uh, they was able to escape. Uh, we all was on our way to hell, but thanks be unto God who sent his precious son to die on a hill called Calvary. But early, oh Lord, sun and morning, he got up with power in his hands. I'm closing now, uh, but I've seen uh, the lightning flash. Uh, I've heard uh, the thunder roll. Uh, I felt sin breakers uh, dashing, uh, trying uh, to conquer my soul. Uh, but I heard uh, the voice of Jesus uh, 
would you grab somebody by the hand uh, and say, neighbor, uh, keep on fighting uh, because he promised uh, to never leave you alone. Uh, I want you to grab somebody uh, by both hands, uh, shake them uh, and rock them, uh, shake them uh, and rock them, uh, lean with it, walk with it, shake them. If they ain't get up yet, yeah, get them up and say, get on up, uh, shake them uh, and rock them, uh, shake them uh, and rock them. Uh, and say, neighbor, uh, that's what God uh, is getting ready to do. Uh, he's getting ready uh, to allow me uh, to escape. Uh, keep holding their hand. Uh, but say, neighbor, uh, as he gets ready uh, to allow me to escape, uh, he's getting ready uh, to allow you uh, to escape as well. Uh, I'm gone. Through the fire, I've been through the flood. I've been broken into pieces. Uh, seen lightning flashing from above. Uh, but through it all, I remember that he loves me and he cares and he'll never Put more on me than I can. Tell somebody uh, he's getting ready uh, to turn it around. Uh, every time I turn around, uh, he keeps on uh, blessing me. Oh, shucks. I was trying to be like Pastor, but I done got dizzy. Y'all give me a minute. Let me tell you why I got dizzy. Uh, because every time I turn around, the Lord uh, keeps on blessing me. Uh, grab your neighbor by the virtual hand. Shake it like you're going to shake it off. Say, neighbor, he picked me up. Turn me around. Place my feet on solid ground. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Tell somebody I won't have a religion that I can't feel sometimes. Lord, I wish I had a church this morning. I wouldn't have a religion. I can't feel. Come on, say somebody, tell them I can't feel. Sometimes my daddy said like this, if I can't say a word, I just wave my hand. If I could say a word. Come on, don't stop praising them. Amen. The dangers 
of not listening. Amen. If, if there's any body we all need to listen to, it's the voice of the Lord. Are y'all hearing me? He speaks to us and we don't listen. He confirms what he speaks to us through the preaching of his word and we still won't listen. What storms are we unnecessarily going through because we refuse to listen? The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. You giving God your money, but you're not listening. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Come on, let's give the messenger a hand. Let's thank God for the message. Amen. What a timely word. We are in the spirit of excellence. Amen. And we're not really listening. Amen. Amen. We have to listen. I shared with the congregation a couple of weeks ago. Amen. The best anniversary the Harvest Church can give the pastor is when they start listening and loving one another and, and obeying God's word. Amen. If you put that in the envelope, I'll be blessed. Amen. Y'all missed that one. Amen. The best thing you can do is obey the voice of the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Martez Whipple. Amen. If you're here in the sanctuary and don't know the Lord as your Savior, listen. Listen. There's a song called Listen. You ought to pull that up on you. Yeah. Marvin Sapp. Listen. Amen. Amen. Failure to pay attention is one of the most dangerous things we can do. Amen. God is speaking to us and we're asking why. Because we, we want to understand before we listen. Y'all missed that. Amen. You don't have to understand. Just listen. Everyone's standing. Everyone's standing. Amen. On the stream, amen, we have uh, Deacon Derek Thomas, Deacon Otho Thomas, Deacon... Owen Chester, amen. They are our digital deacons, deacons, amen. If you want to connect, amen, to God and subsequently connect to this ministry, tap them, amen, and they will make sure you, amen, are connected. If you're here, all you got to do is come down. We open the doors of God's house, and we also open up for prayer, prayer. Pray with me, Pastor. That Say word, that word was for me. Come. To the place, to the place where I, where I first received you. Say Not only was that word for me, but that word was for this house. Come. Oh, Lord, take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, where I. Father, would you please take me back? Take me back. Lord, I need you to take me back. Take me back, dear Lord. To the place. To the place. Where I, where I first received you. Come, don't be shamed. Don't be shy. Come. Take me back. Listen. If he's telling you to come, come. Listen. Take me back. For the first Take time in your life, listen, come. Lord, where I first be listen, before we pray, I failed to mention, amen, continue to pray, amen, for our very own um, state rep, Cynthia Stafford. She lost her uncle, Brother Jerome London, amen, and they're having... The waking celebration on tomorrow, I believe. Amen. And we're certainly praying for Sister Annette that's on the road. She's put in the stream to pray for her traveling grace and for her daughter. Amen. And so keep those two with the previous uh, people I mentioned earlier on in the service. Every head bow, every eye closed. Father God, we come thanking you for your word. Thanking you for the man of God that shared your word. Thank you for a word that 
not only convict, but convince. Thank you for a convincing word. Thank you for a word that would challenge me to be cognizant of whom or who I'm listening to. God, give me discernment to follow godly instruction. Oftentimes, our flesh get in the midst and our flesh overrides your instruction. Sometimes we emotional and we in our emotions and in our feelings that we forget, amen, that our feelings have no intellect. But we thank you for godly instructions. We thank you for putting people around us to give us, amen, to tell us what we need to hear, not what we want to hear. Oh, thank you for giving me people around me that can say, hey, be quiet, let me finish what I'm saying. Thank you for people that don't give up on us. That they are in your will and in your way. Oh, God, teach us how to walk in obedience. Teach us how to let bygones be bygones. God, teach us, amen, how to forgive. Teach us how to open our ears and our hearts to your will and to your way. Father God, I don't know it all. We don't know it all, but we know who knows it all. God, you taught me how to do things I don't feel like doing, but I needed to do it. Thank you, God, for being a way maker. And so, God, we come now asking you to take us back. Take me back. Take me back when I first fell in love with you. Take me back when my ears were open. Take me back. I allowed the vicissitudes of life Amen. To smother my hearing and to smother my sight. Take me back when I first fell in love with you. Take me back when I first received you as my Lord and Savior. God, I was on fire. And I let problems, I let people put the fire out. But the God, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. And I'm going to fight on. I'm going to fight the good fight of faith. Bless these, your people, now under the sound of my voice, whether on the stream or in the sanctuary. Bless them right now. Oh, a new day is coming. A new day is here. Oh, God, thank you for making me over, making me over again. God, thank you, God. Make me over. Make me over. Amen. I'm trying to change everybody, but I'm not trying to change me. Make me over. I don't, don't make my enemy over. Make me over. Amen. Don't make my children over. Make me over. Amen. Don't make the church people I go to church with. Make me over. Amen. Start with me. Because if you start with me, I can deal with them. Give me a new heart. Give me a new mind. Give me a new mentality. I'd rather obey you than obey man. I know you won't lead me wrong. And sometimes, God, you lead me down paths that will mature me, that will develop me, that will burn some of this stuff off of me, that I'm allowing to hinder me. Gird up! In the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we pray now for those that have come, amen, that may be sick, amen. We know you a healer. Oh, God, we know some may come and don't even know, amen, they're being used by the enemy. Oh, we rebuke the enemy right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We bind you up. We put you under our feet. We plead the blood of Jesus. Amen. We cancel every diabolical plan. We cancel every diabolical assignment. We say return unto sender. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for healing. We thank you for making us whole. In the mighty name of Jesus. And so God, this is my new year in October. I am the change agent. I will be the change agent. I will shift the atmosphere. It starts with me. A better church starts with me. A better person starts with me. A better man starts with me. A better woman starts with me. A better whatever starts with me. Inside out, not outside in. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all that love the Lord shout amen. Come on, let all that love the Lord shout amen. Come on, give God some praise. Come on, thank him in advance. 
Come on, thank him in a minute. Oh, Hug somebody. Lord, take me back. Take me back, dear Lord. What a beautiful spirit in this place. To the place where I, where I first received you. Oh, Lord, Start take with me. me. Take me back. Father, would you please? Take me back, dear Lord, where I. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Our harvest news is coming. Amen. Our harvest news is coming. Thank you so much, Pastor Whipple. Thank you, Mount Nebo family, for worshiping with us. And we thank God for that awesome word. Amen. Something to think about. Something. Amen. Amen. That will invoke change. Amen. to join our welcome. We are preparing for our annual Thanksgiving basket distribution. Um, items needed for this distribution will be chicken broth, string beans, cornbread stuffing, mashed potatoes, gravy, candy yams, cake mix, frosting, jiffy mix, macaroni and cheese, cranberry sauce. Please see Sister Juanita Adams to submit donations. You should have said it like Shirley Caesar. Beans, tomatoes, man. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Who's that? <laughs> Who's that? Our I, for, I forgot. Down. Yeah, I forgot. You're, <laughs> look, you're a youngin'. Amen. <laughs> or you may give a monetary donation if you wish. If you wish to use Cash App or Zelle, please note Thanksgiving basket or mission on the note. <laughs> Testimony Tuesday. We will join together in prayer this Tuesday at 6 p.m. at the Harvest for Testimony Tuesday. Let us pray for one another. Church Girl book discussion number one is tomorrow, 6.30 p.m. on Zoom. The Zoom information will be texted out by Sister Thompson with, fur with questions. If you have any questions or concerns, please see Sister Thompson. Combined Mass Choir Rehearsal. This is from Minister Durden. This Tuesday, October 15th at 7 p.m., we will have a Combined Mass Choir Rehearsal with Mont Carmel for a citywide revival service on Wednesday, October 23rd, and Thursday, October 24th at 7 p.m. The address to Mont Carmel is 1745 Northwest 79th Street. Again, that's 1745 Northwest 79th Street. You are appreciated for all that you do for the kingdom. This announcement is from our education department. Parents and students, please be advised the grade for the first quarter goes in Friday, October 18th. So if you need extra work to correct any bad grade, ask your teacher nicely <laughs> and turn it in. <laughs> Keep doing your best. <laughs> Dr. Durden. I like that. Amen. Do you? share will be held on October 26th at 7.30 a.m. We would like for all to come out and help out at Farm Share. And on the fourth Sunday, October 27, 2024, New Harvest will have a pink out day in support of breast cancer. All disciples are asked to wear pink on that day. This concludes our New Harvest news. You have a wonderful week. Thank you so much, Sister Felton. Amen. Here are ways to give. Amen. For our streaming and our sanctuary community, this is on your the televisions in the sanctuary and on the screen. Amen. Cash App, Zale, and Givelify. Cash App, Money Sign, New Harvest Church, all together. Zale, Harvest 1198 at Comcast.net. And Givelify is New Harvest Church. We have QR codes for your liking. Amen. You just put your phone, your camera up on the um, pole, and it will take you to your giving destination. Amen. Cash App, Zale, and Givelify. Amen. I see they put up the pastor's cash app. Amen. I guess it's his anniversary today, but if you wanted to give directly to the pastor, you can do that. No pressure. Amen. I'm just being humble right now. Amen. All right. Listen, I got um, word from uh, our streaming community. We had three, service, three services, and we certainly thank God for those Wednesday night services, um, the Mount Carmel Church, the St. Paul Church, and the Holy Temple Church. 
they didn't feel a part because we shut the stream off. So today, um, they want to be a part of the presentation, so we're going to let it roll. Make sense? Amen. And so we're coming now with our offering. Normally, we'll, we will sign off at this point, but we're going to let it roll. I am flexible, y'all. Amen. Let us stand. One of our deacons will pray. you so much amen we thank god for all of you listen josh and zach are selling tickets i believe it's for homecoming am i right homecoming tickets uh, stand up J josh and, and i want y'all to see the young people amen they they need our support where where's oh there he is over here okay they're selling tickets for homecoming please let us support our youth amen i say please let us support our young people amen all right, brothers and sisters, we're going to um, start with the um, presentations. The the streaming community wanted to be a part, and I'm going to do that. I shared I was flexible. My son, Ma Pastor Martel Clifford, say, you flexible? I say, not with you, but I am. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. You know, we, we have a strange relationship. Amen. Amen. But God is in it. Amen. Listen, um, Sister Tori Lattimore, in my office on my bookshelf is a gift that your grandfather sent me. Can you bring it? I want to uh, do that. Deacon Adams wanted to be here, but he couldn't. But he always sends himself. Amen. Amen.
That's it. That's it. Come on. Y'all young people, just slow down. You're moving too fast. Amen. That was sarcasm. Amen. Come on. <laughs> Don't be nervous. Brothers and sisters, on behalf of our deacon um, Adams, he's the um, chairman emeritus. Deacon Adams didn't think it was robbery to bless his pastor. Amen. With something to wear. Amen. Because, you know, you got to you got to be dressed right when you're delivering God's word. You can't come up here looking disrespectful. Amen. So we thank Deacon Adams for this double breasted. Amen. They bring in double breasted back. Amen. And so. Hey, I don't know if he's watching, but I want to thank Deacon. You can't see it? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Double double breasted suit from our emeritus chairman. Amen. And we certainly thank God. For you, Deacon Adams, if you're watching, I want to thank you. Amen. From the bottom of my heart for your support and for Amen, your sacrifice, not only to the Harvest Church, to God, but to your pastor. Come on, give Deacon Adams a hand. And so at this time, we turn it over. And let me say this before we turn it over. I want to thank the um, pastor esteem committee from the bottom of my heart. I know I am difficult to work with. And it's by design. It's by design, Deacon S. Mac. Because too many times the optic or the stereotype is pastors. All they want is your money. Amen. And I try to curtail that. I don't really want to. Amen. Put that out there. It shouldn't be the first time you hand somebody an envelope. It's because you're asking money for the pastor. See, it's bigger than what y'all think. The first time somebody come in contact with you or your church is because you're asking money for the pastor. See, it's bigger than what y'all think it is. And so, amen. So we, we can't make it about the pastor. Of course, you don't muzzle an ox while he's treading out the corn. I know that. Of course, the Bible say, amen, you should live of the gospel. We're talking to the, the leadership in the church. We should live of the gospel. But we have to keep it in perspective. People are hurting. Amen. I say people are hurting. Amen. And you don't want us, Harvest Church or Pastor Thompson, to feed that stereotype that the minister is money hungry. Amen. Y'all ain't going to clap for that? Amen. Amen. I just pray that we get along. I pray that we come together. I pray that we get rid of the cliques and the isms and schisms. That's the best gift you can give a pastor. A pastor that's in it for the right reason. Amen. I often say I'm not in it for the income. I'm in it for the outcome. Y'all missed it. I'm not in it for the income. I'm in it for the outcome. Pastor Thompson had a very, very, very good job at the City of Miami Police Department. And I left to do what God called me to do. I didn't leave for the money. I was already making six figures by myself. I took a pay cut to do what God has called me to do. Amen. Amen. And I, I can't do this without you all. Amen. You can't be a pastor unless you have sheep. And I want you to know, church, we're not perfect church, but I thank God for this church. Amen. One of the best churches on the planet. So I, I want to say that. Amen. Amen. Before we start the presentation, I thank God for this entire congregation. You all, amen. You all have been a blessing. Amen. I thank Pastor Tez because me and Pastor Tez go at it all the time. And one day he told me, he said, Pastor, you think I'm not listening, but I'm really listening undercover. As soon as we hang up, I do what you share with me to do. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. So he just like to go back and forth with me, but he's really listening. I got it, Tez. Amen. Come on, Sister Thompson. Amen. Yeah, you can't, I can't be up here by myself. You got to come. And it, the, the first two presentations we like to make are the men's ministry and the women's ministry. 
Would you all come? I guess ladies first. All right, so we are here to celebrate Pastor's anniversary, and let's just give a round of applause again for our man and woman of God. On behalf of the women, I would like for all the ladies to please stand. And the, the word says that we are to give pastors, teachers, our leaders double. They are worthy of double honor. So we have just a gift of our appreciation, our love, and our support. We thank you for the seeds that you sow into each of us, and we just want to let you know how much we honor, love, and appreciate you both. So God continue to bless you. First Lady Thompson, we like to thank from all the women of the harvest and the men too. <laughs> that we love you. We thank God for you. We thank God for your dedication first to God, then your dedication to your husband, and the dedication to the church. Um, we thank God that he placed you in our life here aside, alongside your husband to be a support to him while he continues on this journey. And as he always say, when you get to the assignment, you got to stick to the assignment. So God bless both of you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. And we're here for this lovely occasion. Can um, everyone stand from the men ministry? <laughs> Pastor Thompson, we know that you're not about the money. You're about the word. And we thank God for that every single day. You know, I heard you just saying that. But um, everyone here at New Harvest, we love you. Continue to do what you're doing 24 years. And we pray that you live to see many, many more. Continue to bless us with that word, that powerful word. God breathes on Pastor Thompson, and ta Pastor Thompson breathes on us with that powerful word every single Sunday. And I thank God for him as well as you, uh, Sister Thompson, because I always say behind every great, ma behind every good man is a great woman. And God bless your heart. Thank you so much. Pastor, on behalf of our youth ministry, we want to say thank you for all your support. We love you. We love you both. And thank you both. Thank you. <laughs> On behalf of the deaconesses, we would like to tell you we love you. We love you all. And we wish you the very best in your 24 years. If you would like to stand up, Deaconess, if you can. And this is for you, Pastor. We love you. Sorry I'm embarrassing my pastor on screen. Good morning. Um, yesterday we was at a function, an artistic function, I think. What do we get for the man that has everything? Yeah, you got everything. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll ponder until I got home. You could give him kindness, love, respect, and love, and prayer. Thank you. This is from the Howard family. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Howards. Good morning, family. I, um, okay. Hey, y'all. <laughs> I love y'all so much. I just, I, I probably get on y'all nerves the way I text you and tell you so much, but you guys mean the world to me, and your leadership has just grown me beyond what I could ever have think or imagine. And um, as he was speaking, 
um, in his sermon today, if there's no manifestation that's present or prevalent, then it's useless. So I have to say thank you because I've seen God use you and grow me and the miracles that happen while I'm in this congregation, in this church. And I love you guys. I don't I can't even begin to say the words of how much gratitude that I have and how much I appreciate you all. And I didn't come with a big check this year, but you could check your Zell, <laughs> you know. So, you know, but I did write you all a poem, and I want to read it to you if you don't mind. So I titled this A Shepherd's Grace, you know. Um, so with, with humble heart and hands that serve, you lead with wisdom, truth, and nerve. In fields of faith, your voice does guide, a shepherd's true who walks beside. Through every storm, through joy and pain, you stood so firm again and again. Your prayers have soared like eagles flight, a beacon shining in the night. Remember that night you came today? For 24 years, you've sown into fertile ground where love and peace and hope I found. I found hope here. I found I found a lot of hope with every sermon, every every note. So when I got off the the, the, the poem a little bit because I, you know I got here, I said these women are here writing. Wait a minute, <laughs> I had to start writing in order to receive this wisdom that God has given me. So with every sermon, every prayer, we see God's grace and tender care. Your heart reflects his perfect love, a calling sent from up above. In every step, we follow you as you point us to skies of blue. So on this day, we give our praise for all you've done in countless ways. May blessings flow and joy increase as you lead us with God's peace. Happy anniversary, Pastor Thompson, Lady Queen T, got to be with love for your work here and his grace above. I love you all. And blessings to all. Could the music department stand both praise team choir? Everyone is an enter, please. All the music department. Thank you, everyone, music department. Um, Pastor, be grateful for allowing us to serve in the capacity under the auspices of God and then you as our shepherd on um, Lady Thompson, even in the choir, she does so good singing. Um, and last year we were, had a goal in mind, and we came, but this year we actually exceeded our goal. So we are blessing you. I'm just going to say four digits, and that's going to be that. Um, oh, yeah, we love them. For, um, so thank you, music department. We did reach our goal as discussed in our meeting. I'll let y'all see that. You know, yeah, right with me, man. We confirm, confirm, confirm. Okay, gotcha. So, Pastor, we love you. Thank you so much for all that. Music department, can you give it up for the pastor, please? Our shepherd, thank you so much. I can't express my love. Love is an action word, and I try to show it at every opportunity I have. Pastor and Sister Thompson put up with us for probably for a year. They put up for us. They put up with us here at New Harvest, and like Pastor Ripper said, it's sometimes it's kind of hard. We kind of hard sometimes, but we want you to know that we love you. We love you. We love you. This is for you, Pastor, watching this on TV. This is for you, Sister Thompson, from Harvest to the Cure. We love you so much, and we thank you for your guidance, your wisdom, your understanding. We just love you. I can't express it enough. So I just try to put up with it. Thank you. On behalf of the New Harvest Church, we'd like to, the pastor is steering committee, and all the membership of New Harvest, we present to you the things that you've allowed us to do. We pro Next year, 25, it's going to be bigger and better. We're we going to twist his arm a little bit, and we're going to be bigger and better. So look forward. Look forward. 25 in 25. We're going to do it up, okay? <laughs> so we thank you. We love you.
just before we let Pastor go, does, it, does anyone else have any presentation? Maybe does anyone else have a presentation? I just wanted to say to to my pastor, my pastor, and to his wife, my first lady and my firstborn. I uh, we we listen. I've been here I, almost as long as pastor, and one thing I do know from his heart, he does not. Money is not the, the, the driver of his the work that he does. Money is not it. I know this. And I'm gonna tell you for sure because I've been trying to give it. You know. And he's been slowing us down and stopping us. Not stopping us, but slowing us down. He, he, it's, it's not his primary care. And I want everybody to know that for truth. But I've been watching it, and I've watched him do this. But he still got it by dressing. <laughs> Occasionally, he still got it by diamonds. <laughs> And listen, and I love him, I love him, I love my pastor, I love this little church because it is a, it's, it's a small building, but it's a big, big, humongous church, wonderful church, and under his guidance, and it's a mega mini church, that's fine, that's, but I just, I just want you all to know from my heart. And from the hearts of all the other men, I, this is one of the other things I love about my pastor. We have always drawn men to this church. People come in here and say, boy, y'all got a lot of men. I don't know. It, it's him and, 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 and the spirit of God, but he draws men to our church. We've always had a good, hard man's ministry. And I appreciate that. And I just want them to know how much I love them, uh, love them, love them, love them. Clap of praise. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Listen, remember Josh and remember Zach. Amen. They're selling their um, homecoming tickets. Let's support our youth. Amen. Thank, thank all of you again from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate everything you do. Don't think I don't appreciate it. Amen. Amen. Don't think I don't appreciate it, but I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. I'm going to allow Pastor um, Whipple Montez to come back with his remarks and the um, benediction. Son, I'm proud of you today. You stuck with it. Amen. You gave us the word. Amen. And a much needed word. Amen. Amen. The dangers of not listening. And here's the irony, if I can say it. The irony is we want our children to listen to us when we're not listening to God. Before we leave, I want to um, correct something I said in my sermon that um, this may not be the biggest church, but our, our church has a pastor with character. Now listen, if you can do like I do sometimes, I don't have nothing to do, as I'm always here throughout the week, count the chairs. This church can hold over 300 people. Ain't nothing little about it, okay? <laughs> Just for those that's watching, all right? You know, we just got a nice pastor that let food trucks and your cars that break come and park. And, you know, it makes it look small, you know. But if he don't let all that happen, you can really see it. Amen. Pastor office is a big office. Amen. We got three offices. We got a big kitchen. Amen. State of the art. Amen. It's a lot of people to fit over there. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody, my church ain't little. No, look at them. Say, my church ain't little. And here's, here's this. When we get to heaven, it ain't going to be no big or no small church. We going to be one church under God. And so this church has more cars parked on the outside than a lot more churches. And so, amen, stop saying we got a little church. No, we got a Mager church. May, I say Mager. Listen, listen. Major church because we have this, the four walls don't dictate who our leader is. 
Amen. And he has so much influence to bring so many pastors together in this sanctuary. And so, amen. Don't, don't call my church little because ain't nothing little about nothing I go to. Amen, somebody. I go to a major, great big church. Amen. Don't believe me? Amen. Go to some storefronts. Amen. Amen. Go to some storefronts. This is not a storefront. I just want them to know, Pastor, the church can sit over 300 people. Amen. The capacity is 200. That's just for the fire code, but we can hold 300 people. All right? Now, listen. I got to say this before I go. <laughs> About three weeks ago, when God was giving me the sermon, Deacon Alfred, I, I, was, I, was, I was getting agitated because two weeks ago, Pastor was talking to me one night. I was sitting on the counter at the bar stool, the kitchen counter, and he was going on and on. And I literally put my phone on mute. That was my posture, and he just wouldn't stop. And I called Prophet Jay the next day. I said, you know what? God gave me this sermon about listening. I'm, I'm not preaching that. I'm, I'm going to preach something happy, and, and I'm leaving. I'm not going to even leave him nothing, you know, because I can't. I can't. Ain't no way God want me to preach this, and he just won't stop. He's like, are you there? Are you there? I'm like, Pastor, I'm listening. I'm listening. And so, you know, we'll have moments when me, him, and Kevin will be on the phone. And, and sometimes, amen, if Kevin going through it, me and Pastor will jump Kevin. Then when I'm going through it, Kevin and Pastor will jump me. So I stopped calling them. And I started calling Ashley, <laughs> Pastor daughter. Then lately, she's starting to act like her dad, so <laughs> I don't answer her calls no more, all right? But all I'm trying to tell you is this. Pastor says something. Y'all got a great, humble pastor. And I want to thank my Mount Nebo family that came and is watching. Amen. One of the biggest churches in South Florida. Amen. Yeah. That, write that down. Amen. And y'all leaders, he's a great guy. My chairman, no. Don't give me no suit. Amen. Give me the money. Amen. I don't want flowers. Give me the money. Amen. They know that. Amen. Amen. Don't give me a gift card. Give me the money. Amen. And Pastor says earlier, don't give me nothing. Just take this word and listen and sow a seed. That's a great leader. Amen. And Mount Nebo, I don't care how good he preached next year for our anniversary. I want the money, all right? Amen. I'm being truthful. Stand to your feet. We're leaving. I want to say this, and, and listen to me, saints. I had a pastor reach out to me because pastor have um, sons and daughters in the ministry that pastor other churches. Y'all listen to me. Not only is he responsible for this church, but he's responsible for other churches. Amen. Other churches. And I got a young pastor that's pastoring, amen, a nice church. Amen. He just bought him a nice car. I ain't going name, name, name the car because they're going to know who I'm talking about. But he asked me, uh, Pastor, let me call him. Give me a minute. He asked me, out of all the pastors, why did you choose, after your daddy passed, Gregory Thompson? And I told him, my father taught me how to be a great preacher, but I needed somebody to teach me how to be a great pastor. And I've changed so many of my ways because of this great man of God. I, I was invited to another pastor party tonight, and I told him I can't make it because I don't roll like that no more. Amen, somebody. And when I explained to this new pastor 
the benefits of sitting under this man of God. He said, bro, he's not going to never tell you what you want to hear. He's going to tell you what you need to hear. And it's going to bless your life. And so this week coming, our pastor is getting ready to get a new son in the ministry. Amen, somebody. And God is calling a lot of sons and daughters to this Harvest Church. Amen. And so, amen, it's beyond these walls. Amen. Somebody shout, we got multiple locations. No, nah, no, nah, look at somebody else tell we got multiple locations. Amen. Amen. We're leaving. Can we give God praise for Lady Thompson? Amen. And also to their children, we thank God for all of them. And thank you again for allowing me to come. Um, I have something. And listen, don't wait the last minute. Next year, we spirit of excellence. Start putting some aside every month for this day. Amen. That's what I do, Deacon Blocker. Amen. So guess what? I'm going to bless my pastor for his anniversary because I had that set aside. And then watch this, his birthday coming up. I'm going to give it all to him at one time. Amen. And I can never outgive my pastor because what he gives to me, money can't buy. And that's teaching me how to be a man of character and follow Christ. Would you point your hand towards him as we leave? Let's, let's pray for our leader. God, we thank you. We thank you, God. God, we're not asking for anything right now. We're just asking you to keep blessing our pastor. God, thank you for the word that you give him. Thank you, God, that every time we call him, even in being at the Dolphin game, he'll answer the phone. And he will pray for us. Even, God, when they losing, God, he'll still pray. God, we thank you for the mandate. We thank you for the ministry, God. We thank you. He's not perfect, God, but he's perfect with us. We thank you, God, for times he had to rebuke us. Times he had to pray for us. Times he had to get out of his bed and, and come to our rescue, God. God, I thank you for my pastor today. God, I don't care about material things, but thank you for a great leader, God. Thank you for a man after your own heart, God. Thank you for a man that's not about money or material things, God. But he's all about ministry, God. And all he want to do is, God, is make sure, God, that we make it to see you one day. God, we pray for strength in his body right now. Devil, we serve you notice right now that you are a liar right now. No weapon formed against him shall be able to prosper. Every tongue that rises against him shall be condemned. We pray for supernatural ability, God, like never before as he get ready to climb to this next level, God. Give him the strength for the next journey that he's about to enter into. We thank you, God, for his wife. Thank you for her strength. Thank you for her smile, God. Thank you, God, for allowing her to stand next to him, God. We thank you, God, for his children, God. We thank you, God, for the Harvest family. God, continue to bless our pastor. God, continue to strengthen him and continue that he will walk in much favor. Thank you again, God, for blessing this nation with Gregory Thompson. It is in Jesus' name. And the people of God say amen. Somebody shout, I love my pastor. There's nothing he can do about it. Amen. God bless you.